Hi, this is Jason Bonham. And remember, you heard it on the X. Hi folks, welcome back to Heard It on the X, the East Coast premier music talk show brought to you by Mackie, Ampeg, Ernie Ball, Regal Tip, and of course, Rich's Music Exchange at richesmusicexchange.com. We're coming back with the Shaker song, and right now we're joined on the phone by Jay Beckenstein. How you doing, Jay? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing well, man. Uh, it's really, it's a pleasure and it's an honor to talk to you. Oh, it's the, the, the privilege is mine. I, I've been listening for 20 minutes. I've been cracking up over the Kardashian and Bieber, Bieber stuff. And usually we don't we don't even monkey around in that area, but I just find this wedding to be disgusting to me. And, and the Bieber thing, I wonder if that's going to wreck his career, but that's a, that's a different story. We could talk to a real musician. We've, right. we've just gotten to the point where there are professional celebrities. They don't have to do anything. You know what? I they just have to garner attention and maybe be outrageous and silly. And, and the, I think the, the, the 20 million is hysterical. She won. Well, well, my thing with the Bieber child is I, if it's Bieber's child, it would have came out with that full head of Bieber hair. So that you don't even need a DNA <laughs> test. It, it's either a Bieber child or it's, it's not. It's either a Bieber child or not. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's just frightening. He just looks like he's 12, so it's just awful. It, it's it, it's creepy, yeah. Yeah, it, it is creepy. And uh, I, I just wonder if, I wonder if that's his jump the shark moment, if that'll end his career. You never know. I mean, you, you sort of... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Not, not, in, not in that world. I didn't. I he'll, he'll go right on. I hope that they'll... <laughs> whatever. I didn't yeah, know Justin... I think he'll be fine. I didn't know he was he'll a boy. He'll be performing at the Grammys. That's right. Exactly. You're exactly right. Um, okay. First of all, welcome to the show, and thank you so much for taking time with us. Um, and I want to let everybody know that Spyro's new album, For It Affair, is, is out. Um... And there's some dates you're, you're playing right now. You're out playing right now. But I, a lot of people, I'm amazed by how many people don't know that this is a this is a band that started had its roots here in Buffalo, correct? Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, we we recorded our uh, our first record in Clarence, New York. Um, and I, you know, I lived in Buffalo for ten years, and really the band worked in well, bars in Buffalo for maybe four years, and it, it incubated there. And the band is a, is a veritable who's who of jazz heavyweights and Buffalo heavyweights. I mean, people like Freddie Rapallo, Will Lee, Ted Reinhardt, Steve Jordan, the Brecker Brothers, uh, Jim Kersdorfer, Eli Konikoff, just to name a few, have gone through, you know, that band, correct? Absolutely, everybody you named and then some. Oh, yeah. In uh, fact, a couple of weeks ago I saw Rick Strauss, another Buffalonian that was involved. Um yeah, you know, Buffalo, uh, when I was uh, living there, which was basically from about 69 to 80, uh, was, a, was an incredibly great music town. Um, it, had, uh, I, it, it was an eye-opener for me. I came to, uh, to go to school here and latched onto the local music scene because it, it really was heavy. Um, I was working with people like Jim Collieri and... Uh, and people from the Raven. And, yeah, Jim Cleary uh, from Raven. And I just heard a commercial for Billy McEwen. I was working with Billy McEwen. Yeah. Bi um, you know, and so my, my I came al along as a jazz player, and, and really Miles was my guy and all. But the Buffalo scene taught me about the blues and a lot about rockability, a lot about, about uh, you know, really strong, heartfelt music. Um, and, and the Buffalo scene, like you said, there's a, there's a quote that you said it was almost like a mini Chicago. You came here to go to school. You went to Buff, Buff State? I went to SUNY. Okay, so you, to, uh, to, you, UB. Uh, uh, SUNY Buffalo. We're right across the street. Yeah, we're right across from the street from there right now. And then you decide, um, you, you're from Long Island, <laughs> and, you, and you hang out you hang out in Buffalo. But, uh, I've heard stories about you used to play with Barbara Sinclair uh, in, in one of her bands. And the band that, that the actual Tuesday Night Jam came out of, was that band, the original band that you were playing with, was it called Jack Daniels? Was that the name of the band? No, there was no name. It was Jazz Every Tuesday Night. Uh, and uh, But, you know, the band I played with for a couple of years that I thought was really good back then was a band called The House Rockers. That Was that Barbara's band? That, yeah, Barbara fronted it. Yeah, Barbara St. Clair and the House Rockers, and the, and the other one was a guy named Elmo Witherspoon, uh, where I got to play with the guitarist Ernie Corello. And he was just awesome. Ernie's one of my best friends, and Ernie's been on the show a, a bunch of times. Ernie toured with Paul Williams for a while, and yeah, yeah, Ernie's uh, he's he's actually back in this area now. He's been back for a little bit. Um, yeah. Well, rem remember me to him. I, 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 Ernie was one of those guys when I said I came to Buffalo and had my eyes open. 
played with such fullness and force and ferocity of heart that uh, I really went, wow. And it, it affected me. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and I think anybody who was a musician in Buffalo, especially at that time, would, would walk into a club and, and see what you were doing on Tuesday nights or see Stan and the Ravens or something that, that Ernie was in or, you know, any of the number of bands and just get blown away. I mean, I, I remember literally getting blown away by Stan and the Ravens and, and I had to see them every week. I mean, it was just, that's just the way it was. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. It was a really cool scene. And, and it was good. It was super good for me as a saxophonist. I got to... Uh, to stretch into a lot of other styles other than just trying to be a jazz saxophonist. And when Spyro Gyra came along, I think a lot of our success had to do with the fact that we we really weren't a straight-ahead jazz band at all. We were some kind of hybrid of a lot of different things. And Buffalo taught me about that. That was a really... Uh, it was a real growth period in my life. I went from college student to, to adult musician there. And, uh, you know... I, uh, people had uh, big influences on me. Uh, John Sadola was a terrific teacher I had. Uh, one of the, Ed Yuzinski was another teacher. I think he, he may have passed, but he was with the Philharmonic. You talk about Art Kubera. Yeah. Art, Art, Art loaned me all my equipment. Yeah. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm super proud to say I paid him back double. Oh, good for you. You're probably the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I remember there was a box of file cards, and <laughs> I was one of them. <laughs> it's funny because Art is responsible for every single musician in Western New York from like '65, you know, up into the '80s. He's he, every single musician. Went to that store was was legendary too. Um, so you were you you had mentioned that you guys. I mean, you you took all these influences that you're hearing and all these musicians that you're hearing, and you kind of came out with. Uh, really like a fusion type jazz it's really hard to label your band it's almost impossible to label the sound that you guys have because it's so many different sounds and even album to album the sound changes is that a conscious thing or is it just where wherever it takes you well it, it, it's it's the result of a few things uh, uh i and the other guys in the band really did grow up in a period where that was simply happening miles davis you know was halfway between Charlie Parker and Jimi Hendrix when he was playing. Right. Um, and uh, there, was, there was all sorts of mixing going on. I do, you know, was Poco a rock band or a country band or a what? Yeah. I mean, it was just one thing after another that, that was cross, cross-referencing styles. And uh, I, I love that. And so that, that's something I wanted to do right from the beginning, show that I could do all these different things. And then the other thing is that Spyro Gyra has always been a bit of a, uh, well, it has been a, a democratically artistic organization. When you look at any of our records, it's everybody in the band gets to write songs. And people actually, uh, you know, stayed with the band over the years because they were good songwriters. So you not only have this openness to stylistic difference, but you have, you've got... Uh, five different people or seven different people coming from different places offering material and everybody collectively being willing to slide in whatever direction is necessary to make the composer happy so it's made for a, an eclectic bunch of stuff yeah you know we're talking a lot about the beginnings and everything like that but i mean 30 some odd years later the you're still having such success the last four albums were all nominated for grammys it's just got to be so rewarding for, you know, all that time spent that you're still uh, just having such success and you're still relevant and you're still just putting out great music. Well, and we're still healthy. Um, you know, first and foremost, we're, we're still healthy and motivated and feel, uh, feel young about it. Uh, and, and then we're, we're, we're very, very proud that, uh, I mean, if, if you put any of our early stuff up against our later stuff, we keep getting better, um, and uh, we really like the place we find ourselves in after, I think it's 34 years now, and that, that is an awesome, awesome thing to be able to say. It's got to be great. The question is, can you get paid $20 million for a wedding, Jay? That's the real question. <laughs> We've thought of the reality show. I think we'd be too boring. Uh, and too <laughs> talented. That's the problem. Let them tour with us. But, but no. 
The yeah. problem is you have you have talent, which is yeah. well, that's a show killer. If you have actual talent, you have immense talent. They they, they would have, they wouldn't even know what to do with you. <laughs> you know, unless you <laughs> unless you can get drunk and just be videotaped doing that. We're gonna take a small commercial break. Can you join us for one more segment, please? Of course, love to. All right, stick around, folks. Heard it on the X. Hi.